from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tie Cats Today for this Thursday, July the sixth, twenty twenty three, right here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. I'm Braden Neville, and it was another hot, sunny day today at Tie Cats practice. We are now only two days away from the Tie Cats home game at Tim Hortons Field against. The Ottawa Red Blacks, the Ticats still looking to get that first win of the season against a team that just got their first win of the season against the Edmonton Elks last weekend. Their first win at home in over 600 days, so it was well overdue. Today I spoke to Coach O, JV and Elliott, Richie Sandani, and David Beard about the upcoming matchup with the Red Blacks, which we will get to in just a bit. But first, I'm going to get to some news around the team. The Ticats announced today that the team has signed Miles Manalo. If that name sounds familiar, that's because he was just with the team at the start of the season and has played 12 games over the past two seasons with the Cats. The team has also announced that receiver and kick returner Leandre Gallimore has been released. He was a great player. He had that exciting punt return touchdown in the preseason, so we wish him all the best. The big story of the week has been Jeremiah Masoli making his first start against the Ticats since signing with Ottawa last season. It's hard to ignore the extra little bit of excitement, the little bit of buzz around this return to Hamilton. And I asked Coach O about facing off against his former QB and more. All right, Coach, uh, Jeremiah Masoli is going to be making the start for the Red Blacks. Just a little bit on what you can give me on him and and what this defense needs to do to, to shut them down. Jeremiah's body of work speaks for itself. You know, he's a winner. He's a competitor. He's, I'm sure, uh, beyond excited for this opportunity. Uh, we anticipated this, you know, well before the, any announcement. So at the end of the day, it's more important that we focus on ourselves. Obviously, he poses a different uh, game plan type of thing. But at the end of the day, their offense is going to be their offense. And how he executes is going to be what matters. So um, that's all I really say about the other team because you can't control uh, how they how they view and how they're going to attack us. What we can control is how we prepare and how we execute. And then on the other side of the ball, the offense. Just what have you seen from them in practice this week, and what needs to be done to maybe get some more touchdowns? Yeah, I just got to execute. I, I made mention of that there. Right, when we have opportunities to score, we need to find a way to score. You know, it's a, it's a three phase football game. You win and lose as a team. And yeah, if there's not areas of improvement. It's always going to be tough. But uh, we don't we don't think that way in this building. That's not how we are. We're going to address uh, challenges, um, you know, in an appropriate manner. Sometimes extremely hard, but uh, addressing them is really making it show up on game day. That was Coach O. Now Richie Sindani spoke to me today about that upcoming game, what this offense needs to do to start punching the ball in the end zone a little bit more. And Richie played in his first game in the home opener against the Alouettes, and he's hoping that this game the offense can give the fans a little bit more to cheer about. Richie, just how has the week been so far just in preparations for uh, this Ottawa game? Really good, actually. I think we, uh, we've approached this week with a lot of intensity. Uh, we're doing a lot of running. We're doing a lot of uh, in-game uh, simulation. I love that. Um, I think Coach O is really good at mixing it up and giving us scenarios uh, to prepare for, uh, team dependent. So I feel really good about how we've kind of prepared for this week. And this upcoming matchup in the, with the Red Blacks, what does this receiving core need to do? Put more points on the board. Yeah, I think it's just taking what the defense gives us. Uh, I, I, I think their defense has been pretty good so far this season, to be honest with you. Um, we want to figure out ways to uh, get our offense going early and then kind of get those bigger plays throughout the stretch of the game. So I think that's kind of our game plan there. And now still no wins on the board yet. How important is it to get maybe this first one on the board and do it at home? Yeah, it's just one day at a time, one game at a time. I think it's important to get a win for the home crowd here. Obviously, we're playing in Hamilton here. Um, but uh, no, it's just one It's just one game at a time, one day at a time for us right now. And then just with Matthew uh, during, uh, during the week, during mm-hmm. practice, how has it been? How has the O-line been now that a couple more guys have been back. How has that whole offense been clicking so far? Yeah, we kind of got unlucky with our O-line kind of getting hurt a little bit uh, early in the, in the season here. But Matt's been really great. Uh, quarterbacks have been great in general, uh, just kind of feeding off information, uh, rebounding us when things do go wrong or when things go right. And honestly, you know, that's how we're going to turn – that's how we turn things around, I think. Uh, it takes uh, those kind of leaders. And then getting those O-line guys back, a lot of those guys are our leaders as well. I think that's the, that's the nucleus of how we're going to turn things around here. 
That was Richie Sindani as he prepares for his second game as a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. JV and Elliott has been an appreciated addition to the Tiger Cats secondary. Elliott spoke to me today about what needs to be done on defense to shut down Masoli and the Red Blacks. All right, Javian, how do you feel preparations have gone throughout the week for that Ottawa game? Uh, I feel like preparation is going good. You know, that's one of the things that we really got to do, prepare so we can go out there and perform. And then what do you feel needs to be done with this Ticats secondary to, to stop those long passing plays, those passing plays from Basoli and uh, that offense? Yeah, we just got to continue to prepare, you know, go out there, execute, communicate, go out there uh, and really just uh, be all on one accord, you know, as far as on the field, off the field, just growing together, you know, since this is a new group, they're used to uh, guys who've been here for years. Uh, we're a new group, so we just got to gel into one unit. Yeah, and how has the gelling like process been over the last few weeks? Is it e- is it starting to get easier? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, just like I said, bonding off the field, uh, hanging outside uh, the locker room helps a lot, and just uh, doing doing more than what's required as far as film and preparation. And then on defense, what could be done differently this game to improve on last from last game? Uh, execution. We got to take the ball away, get turnovers. Uh, you know, that's really the main thing. Get off the field. That was Javian Elliott. Now, the final player I spoke to today was David Beard. Beard is widely considered one of, if not the best center in the league, and it's so crucial to have him on that Ticats O-line, and an O-line that has been an area this season that has had its fair share of injuries. Several Ticats have missed games this season on that O-line, but Beard, he's been solid and able to maintain his health through this tough stretch of games. He spoke about the importance of gelling with the other members of the O-line and what needs to be done on Saturday. A few guys have returned to that O-line here. How has it been just getting to re-gel with some of those guys who, who have been out? Yeah, I mean, it's it's always a process. Even this point in the year, all five starters are in. Um, that's, that's still We're still working away at stuff, right? So, um, yeah, it's great to have some guys back. Um, the work is never finished, so, yeah. How important is it just to have that chemistry, that familiarity with the guys beside you? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, anyone who's played O-line uh, would know um, how invaluable it is to be able to kind of predict what your buddy's doing beside you uh, even before they can say or do anything. Um, so that's that's a real important piece. Um, but it's not that it can't be done without it. It's just it's a lot easier when you have some chemistry and some experience together. So. And then with this upcoming matchup with the Red Blacks, just what does this offense need to do maybe differently from, from last game? Yeah, I think we need to uh, take care of the football. Uh, we need to make sure we can keep Matt up and keep him pressure free. Uh, that's uh, definitely a goal of ours in, in our room. Um, yeah, I think if we can just focus on the small details, um, not get too concerned uh, or focused on kind of what's going on outside of our group, just kind of stay focused, stay the course, um, let the chips fall where they may, and let where those chips fall be a byproduct of our focus. and. Uh, yeah, staying on task. So, Big thanks to David Beard, J.V. and Elliott, Richie Sindani, and Coach O for being on the show today. Game day is now only two days away, and the Ticats are searching for that ever-important first win of the season. Tickets are available for the game, so make sure to get those if you can. The game won't be all that's happening at Tim Hortons Field Saturday. The first South Plaza Saturday of the season will be happening. There will be all sorts of of great things for the family to do just south of Tim Hortons Field, from inflatables to face painting, maybe get a tie cat painted on your face, to an autograph session with some of the members of the Tie Cats and Tim Cheatwood, our alumnus of distinction, will also be there. Plus, one lucky attendee to South Plaza Saturday will win a pair of tickets to the 110th Grey Cup at Tim Hortons Field in November. A huge prize. And if that isn't enough for you, during Tiger Cats pre-game presented by Greenworks. We will have our Greenworks Listen to Win contest. It's super easy. Listen for the keyword and somebody who gets it right will win a Greenworks 40 volt 16 inch cordless lawnmower. Tiger Cats pre-game starts at 6 on Saturday at listen.tigercats.ca. It will be a fun time at Tim Hortons Field this Saturday and hopefully, hopefully, there is something to celebrate, and we see that first Ticats victory of the season. That's all the time for me today. Thank you for listening to Ticats Today.